So thank you so much, um, Charlotte and Patrick and Nick and Sarah for joining us uh, for the Smart Loving Online Sponsor Orientation Webinar. Look, I just wanted to let you know, um, we will we'll record this in case people haven't, um, you know, weren't able to join us. So just wanted to let you know that, that um, we'll, we'll record this webinar. Um, so thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Um, my name's Laura, Laura Kane, and my role is Community Engagement for the Marriage Resource Centre and Smart Loving. So it's such a pleasure to meet you online today. And we have Francine Parola, who is um, one of our directors of Smart Loving, along with her husband, um, Byron, who can't join us tonight. Or he might pop in. We'll see how he, how he goes in, in Melbourne. He's in <laughs> Melbourne, and um, I think he's got a dinner on, so we'll see how he goes. Yeah. So this session, we aim, it will give you an overview of the smart loving process for preparing couples for marriage and provide you with some information um, for you to discern if you think God might be calling you and your spouse to be a sponsor couple. Um, so following the presentation, we're going to have opportunities for you to ask questions and make any comments. And it's really nice that it's a small group. Um, and, you know, so you can un unmute your audio if you want and ask yeah, a question. Just, or if you prefer. Us. Yeah, if you can, if you prefer, you can type a question in the chat or raise your hand. You'll see there's icons there to do that. Um, look, if you have any te technical difficulties, you can try leaving and rejoining the meeting. So there, that's a little bit of housekeeping out of the way. So I'd like to introduce Francine. Francine and her husband Byron are the founders of Smart Loving, and Smart Loving is a global uh, Catholic marriage ministry or an apostolate, and it's dedicated to renewing the church through the empowerment of the sacrament of matrimony. So we have courses and programs um, that are attended by thousands of couples every year uh, through the online learning platform or via live delivery. So Byron and Fran live in Sydney, Australia. They've been married for 35 years, have five children and three grandchildren. So thanks, Fran, for everything you've done for couples, myself and Joe included, and for the church. So I'll just skip to the next slide now. So we just wanted to begin the webinar with some prayer and God's word in scripture. So I'll just lead the prayer. So let's go for it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. God, our Father, loving and merciful, bring together and keep all families in perfect unity of love and mutual support. Instill in each member the spirit of understanding and affection for each other. Keep quarrels and bitterness far from them. And for their occasional failures, instill forgiveness and peace. May the mutual love and affection of parents set a good example. May the mutual affection and respect of families be a sign of Christian life here and hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I might hand over to Francine now to go through our agenda for this evening. So sure. Um, look, our goal here for you tonight is that you would leave knowing why, how, and what a sponsor couple is. So we're just going to spend a few minutes unpacking marriage formation and what the church is, um, some of the latest developments in the church thinking around that. There's a really interesting global uh, initiative taking place. And then we'll break open what the sponsor system is. It's still, many of you have experienced the Engage course, but perhaps you haven't, probably didn't have a sponsor couple. So we'll explain how that works. And then Laura will do a quick demo on the online platform if you're not familiar with it. And we'll be able to have some questions after that. So firstly, the emerging, emerging vision. Um, the... In October last year, actually it was a little bit early, but the English translation for the latest document called the Catechumenal Pathways for Married Life came out. It was drafted by the Dicastery of Laity, Family and Life and with under sort of Pope Francis's 
uh, here comes somebody else, Pope Francis's direction. Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of a pretty long and detailed kind of document. Hello there, welcome. You haven't missed much, we're just getting underway. Uh, but what it is, is it's, it's pitching a very big vision for how to recraft, particularly the preparation and formation of engaged couples ahead of, uh, as they approach marriage and also in the years after. The, I'll just move on to the next slide. The goals and the objectives, as is stated by the document, uh, is to enable them, talking about engaged couples or, or young couples, to celebrate the sacrament of marriage with greater awareness, beginning with an experience of faith and personal encounter with Jesus. And it points out that there's two, these three contemporary reality requirements that re require a kind of a different approach to what has been happening in the past. Um, so the first one they point out is the reduced number of people who marry. This is particularly so here in Australia and in developed countries where there has been a redefinition definition of marriage. It's not only that couples are not marrying in the Catholic Church, couples are just not marrying as much, so the marriage rate is declining. Uh, the short duration of marriage, including sacramental marriages, so that's a, that's been a, a well-known phenomenon for some time. And then thirdly, and this is a new one, I think, that I haven't seen spoken about much, is this validity of the marriage is celebrated. So there's a concern to make sure that those who do marry in the church are actually entering into valid marriages and not just um, going through the motions. It identifies four stages of marriage formation that are specific to this marriage catechumenate model. And they are remote, which really is about focusing on children and singles or, or couples in the early stages of dating. The proximate, which is the sort of kind of a bit of a very significant focus for um, newly engaged or courting, so couples that are in that discernment phase or you know, moving towards marriage. Final, um, which is just in the few months immediately pre the wedding, and that's got a much stronger emphasis on spiritual preparation. And then there's accompaniment after the marriage, so it's enrichment post-wedding. Interestingly, they also note, and this is a little bit new, um, is that there are these rites that transition from one stage to the other. And so we're familiar with the rite of of um of marriage or the, the which is a wedding that's well established in the church a betrothal blessing has been around for some time but it has sort of fallen out of use but they're suggesting that we need to recapture that as a transition from that proximate into that final and then they also suggest a right of entry and that whole kind of little model is based on the um uh, our CIA, the Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults. You can sort of, if, if you're familiar with that process, the way that we bring um, adults into the church, you'll recognise the pattern there. If you've got any questions, please feel free. There's a small group, so you can just interrupt me and we can stop for a moment. Otherwise, I'll just keep keep rolling. So I think, crucially, some of the key ideas um, and real points of difference to our current practice is that the document really points out that the purpose um, of the marriage catechumenate is evangelization, a proclamation of the charisma. Um, so the charisma is just the basics of um, the gospel message, if you like. Uh, so the strong emphasis on the formation of faith. It's not just divorce prevention. That would be, I think, what most of the marriage preparation courses in Australia at least tend to focus on is, uh, you know, skills and relationship sort of um, tools and things all really helpful, uh, but it's really focused on divorce prevention rather than this broader vision of vocational discernment, um, the consent, protecting the consent of the couple, ensuring that they're so that they're going into a valid marriage. Another strong emphasis is accompaniment. So with faith-filled married couples, um, suitable experts and working with the pastor. So again, a, you know, a community, a local community walking with the engaged couple. And the third, I think, idea that's a little bit of a point of difference to the current practice is that it's very much a process from birth to death in its broadest sense, but particularly in this, in me, this sort of um, shorter duration around preparing an engaged couple, um, the um, you know the, the year or two, year or two before and after the wedding, uh, with stages and transition rituals. So we've got this extension. So rather than just turning up and doing a course in a weekend or sometimes just a day, we're looking at a prolonged, um, you know, several several years of accompaniment and formation and you know, reinforcement. 
I guess the big question is, is you know, why? <laughs> why does this even matter? And when we reflect on this, I think one of the key things is, is that when we just look at our faith, we appreciate that God is love. And when you've got a lot of marriage breakdown, and and I know in conversations with some of my nephews and nieces whose parents divorced, um, that there is this real sense of crisis of confidence that if mum and dad said they loved each other on their wedding day and now they don't anymore, can love be trusted? And if we love can't be trusted and God is love, how can we trust God? So that you sort of get these knock-on effects that if human love is so fickle, it doesn't reflect a divine reality or becomes the, the reflection of the divine reality gets broken down. We've known for a long time that our experience of our natural father, our human fathers, um, bears a direct import, uh, impact on how we understand the heavenly father. So if we grew up in with a father figure who was very uh, severe and um, perhaps distant, that would be the kind of image that we have of God the father. So we want to have fathers linked and, and involved with their children and marriage breakdown obviously makes that much more difficult. And finally, uh, I guess that Jesus is the bridegroom, that he comes to marry us, to become one flesh with us. And this is part of the theology that actually has been present right through the Jewish scriptures. It's not new theology, but it's been given, uh, I guess, a new cohesiveness and um, articulation through the works of Pope John Paul II through his theology of the body, uh, which is still um, finding its way into the mainstream of the church. So the whole idea is that, you know, we really encounter God through intimate relationships. And I love this quote from Pope John Paul II in 1984, as the family goes, so goes the nation and so goes the whole world. So the health of our families, the health of our marriages is not just about individual the impact on those members of the family it has a much broader impact in the in the nation and into the world and just to kind of illustrate this with some statistical kind of evidence um we all know that there's been this sort of growth in the nuns those who have no religious affiliation that there gets a lot of media attention whenever there's a census or the surveys and if you look at that by generation, we can see that that, are, that the proportion of millennials is almost double that of the boomers. So the boomers are those born before 1960. Gen X, I think, is before 2000s and the millennials after the 2000s. That's a pretty, that's a 50%, almost 50% increase. That's pretty significant. But what's happening behind these figures that often isn't appreciated is that there is a simultaneous um, progressively more present failure in family formation. And so when we look at um, the family of origin of the millennials, those who have a married parent are 78% more likely to go to church. And just breaking that down further, if we control for marital um, status in the family and the parents, there's practically no difference between all of those generations. You see how it just flattens out. And so behind these statistics is this factor of marriage that is profoundly influencing not just the affiliation where the people identify as uh, with their religious tradition, but also whether they're likely to practice and be actively involved in the worship through a community. And so when you look at that from the church's point of view, it really becomes pretty critical that we address the state of marriages in our community if we want to change the dial in terms of our impact uh, in, in our communities. So just a little summary, the marriage catechumenate was prolonged as over months plus into the newlywed years, comprehensive, so trying to integrate relationship skills, insight, theology and spiritual formation, so not just a secular approach but something that looks at the whole person as a spiritual, psycho-emotional, physical being. And then there's accompaniment by couples and particularly by the parish priest. So how do we get from here? What we've pretty much got um, is couples turn up at the church door to sort of seeking a Catholic marriage. They're already engaged. They've got a predetermined date. So they're on that, um, what I call the wedding train, where, you know, they're putting money down to book, um, you know, reception centres that are non-refundable. They've got family members or friends that are booking international flights to come and be present at the wedding. Everybody's getting excited. They're buying dresses and things like that. Trying to stop that train gets harder and harder the closer to the wedding date. So if, if they've done their discernment 
properly, it's not an issue, but many of them have drifted into marriage without properly discerning. And so then it gets really hard for them to step back and say, hang on, I need to think a bit more about this. Many of them are somewhat passive in their faith. Uh, if they're coming to the church to get married, they probably have some connection. They're not identifying as a nun, <laughs> at least. So there is some connection, but it's often fairly passive. Um, and, and, and by that, I mean, it's not really growing. If they're marrying a non-Catholic and in, in smart, loving, engaged, about 45% of the couples that come through that course are marrying um, uh, as a Catholic to another religious tradition. Um, and we get uh, mostly other Christians, but we do get a, a mix right across all the different religions or atheists or nuns. Um, there's often no sense of trying to involve or invite the non-Catholic party into the faith. They probably haven't had a lot of marriage formation up until that time. And if they have, it can be actually quite negative and destructive. If they've had any exposure to pornography, for example, that would be a very negative um, formation. They're like, most likely sexually active. Um, they're most likely living together. They're probably contracepting. And they're generally we find them quite resistant to input. They don't really approach the church thinking the church can teach them anything. They're really coming in thinking about the church as a venue for the wedding, for the wedding ceremony. And all of that adds up to, okay, is, are they, is, there, is the commitment they're making, can we really be confident that it's valid when there's, um, uh, that they haven't really or understood what Catholic marriage is all about? We also know that many of those factors put them at higher risk of divorce. So that's where we're at. How do we get to where the document is suggesting we should be, which is connecting with couples at an earlier stage when they're still in that courting and they're open to discernment and that's an active process. So the date for the wedding hasn't been determined yet. That takes them off that pressure of that wedding train. Their faith is growing and they're, um, they're, there's a receptivity or a willingness or an eagerness to explore the non-Catholic becoming part of the Catholic faith. They've perhaps had some good formation because through their Catholic school or their, their youth groups and their other activities that they've been involved in, um, they've been getting uh, drip fed with good formation. And because of that, they're more willing or readily able to be sexually chased. Um, so they'll be living separately, more open to taking on the church's teachings around being open to life and receptive to the input. All of that adds up to them being more able to fully consent and to lowering their risk of later divorce. And I would summarise it as being, you know, instead of marrying at a church, they're thinking about marrying in the church. They're, they see themselves as entering the vocation. So that's a big jump. It's an ideal. We need to, um, I guess, have a picture of where we want to go because it keeps us sort of heading in the right direction. But we also need to be careful that we don't get discouraged because it's such a big leap. And I think if we can move the dial on some of these things, um, we can master those and then move on to the others. And you'd be pleased to know that even with Smart Loving, our um, stats are already moving the dial on some of these things. So for example, 85% um, of the couples, our graduates from the Engage course, say that they already are, or they would like to, or there's, would be open to being sexually chased up until the wedding, uh, to abstain from sex. Uh, that's an incredible, incredible result. That when we present the teachings of the church well and with love and with joy, we can go a long way towards helping people realise and appreciate the value of um, abstaining from sex until the wedding night. Um, over 90% of couples say that they are interested and open to using fertility awareness methods. Again, if it's presented well, we can actually move the dial. We'd like them to be receiving some of this information well before they're turning up with a, you know, to get to uh, in their preparation for marriage. It'd be great to be getting into young people, but we can still do a lot with them even when they're already in that um, relationship that's really at an advanced stage. How do we do that? Um, we need to be pragmatical about it. And we think the key is really to move marriage preparation back into the parish. Uh, that's where the relationships can happen. That's where the accompaniment, that's where evangelization can really take root. So 
the big objections we hear from that, <laughs> uh, from priests particularly, but from others, is the first one is, is that, well, we don't have any weddings here. They'll say to us, you know, this church is an ugly church. It was built in the 1970s. You know, there was that terrible architecture then. Um, and they said, we just don't, we haven't had a wedding here for two years. I've had priests say that to me. And I always like to point out to them, but you've got people who live in this parish who got married during that time. They might have chosen the pretty sandstone church of the harbour setting, but they resided in your parish. And so what we're really trying to do, and we talk to bishops whenever we get a chance, sort of give them a bit of an ear bash, um, and clergy, is we just try to help them appreciate that we need to distinguish between what the wedding venue is and from where the couple originates and centre the marriage preparation and the formation in the parish rather than at the venue, the wedding destination. Uh, because that's where they're likely to have ongoing contact beyond the wedding. So that's a really critical mind shift. In the past, I think we've sort of said, well, if they get married in Church X, it's Church X takes on the responsibility of the marriage preparation, uh, whereas really it should be. And cannot, by canon law, their pastor where they reside, where their domicile is the term, is actually responsible pastoring for their formation. The second objection is they'll say, well, we just don't have the skills, we don't have the people, we haven't got the time. And so what we're trying to do with our smart loving resources is to equip the local community with resources where they can supervise formation without a lot of effort. We call this model a centrally enabled and locally delivered. So Laura, do you want to pick up and explain yes, the sponsor Thanks. system? Thanks, Fran. So one part of Smart Loving's response to this marriage catechumen at parish-based marriage preparation is our Smart Loving sponsor system. So we have um, an online learning platform and it utilises technology to enhance a couple's formation experience. So we have two courses, the Engage course and the Sponsor course, and each has really high quality content with high production values in what we call like a documentary style. And the course integrates theological content with the relationship psychology, the best of the relationship psychology. So it's, it's an experience that the couple's not just being lectured to, sitting in a room and, and you know, hearing um, from a speaker, but there's a couple activities within the, within the course, quizzes, as well as practical skills and tools for their everyday living so that they can make a habit um, of tools that are going to make their marriage thrive. So the sponsor system, it aims to facilitate connection co and collaboration. So with a married sponsor couple like yourself, an engaged couple, and with the clergy responsible for preparing a couple for the sacrament of marriage, you work as a team. And as Fran was saying, it enables parishes to host world-class marriage formation from within the parish without overloading uh, the poor parish priest or the limited resources that our parishes have. So as Fran said, it's centrally enabled by Smart Loving, but locally delivered by your local parish. So to give you a bit of a course overview, um, it's fully online learning and it's self-paced, so it's really flexible. The couple can go as fast or as slow as they like. Um, we recommend at least, we recommend one lesson per week um, and all the teaching and instructions are in the online platform. So there are nine lessons and it takes approximately 90 minutes each. Some, some um, couples spend a lot longer in a lesson and some couples may be a little bit shorter. So the we often get questions, is the course approved by the church? And yes, we the engaged course has an imprimatur, and that means it's fully approved. And an Archbishop uh, Archbishop Anthony Fisher actually has got, reviewed the course and given it an approval. So the course uh, includes a wedding liturgy planner for the couple, fertility instructions, and all engaged couples actually get access to a newlywed program after the course. So we're really trying to follow Pope Francis's instructions of that prolonged accompaniment. And included in the sponsor version of the course are tips and support for you as the sponsor couple. So what happens is that each couple, the married sponsor couple and the engaged couple, they do the online course in parallel with one another in their own time and space. And then once they've finished a lesson, they meet up with one another to share and discuss um, the discussion questions at the end of each lesson. And so we provide um, workbooks <laughs> and there are discussion questions available in the work workbook and, and online in the online course to go through with your engaged couple. So if you were say, to say yes to being a sponsor couple, what would your role be? 
your role is to accompany the engaged couple on their journey to matrimony. So my husband Joe and I have been a couple for about eight, a sponsor couple for about eight years. So your job is to provide a bit of hospitality and welcome. So make sure your meeting space is welcoming, and we we say to always include a bit of food and drink. Um, after all, we know Jesus did most of his teaching around a meal. Um, and then you're also your role is to provide practical support for that engaged couple, meeting with them and being available to them to discuss any issues and answer questions about your own relationship. You can provide, your role is to provide spiritual support, praying for the engaged couple and with them. And then you're also um, to be a role model. So you want to model to the engaged couple um, that you are growing, um, that you're growing in your own relationship and in your own faith. So it's important that you do the sponsor course yourselves and you can watch the videos, answer the questions and inventories and do the activities together. And you'll find this is where you as a couple, you'll experience like really great blessings from this. And we say that you can't really be a sponsor couple unless you both, that's the husband and the wife, participate in this. So if your spouse is unwilling, there are other ways that you can be involved, but we really want the both the masculine and feminine input um, as a sponsor couple. So what you are not, as a sponsor couple, you're not a theological export, expert um, and you don't have to be a relationship guru. You don't need to have all the answers and you're not counsellors. So you don't need to fix the engaged couple or to make moral judgments about their choices. And then you're not course examiners either. You're not there to pass or fail the couple in the course. So it's in, sometimes engaged couples think that that's the case. So we always say to them, you know, the, the assessment happens within the course. We're just here to be your friend and, and journey and accompany you through this um, period. So no formal train is, training is needed to be a sponsor couple. Um, so going through and completing the course is all you need to do and attending a webinar like this is just an added bonus and we hope it will give you the confidence to get involved in this important ministry and think we can do this. <laughs> so do we have a sponsor couple criteria? We have some general guidelines for sponsor couples. We recommend that they've been married at least five years. However, some of our newlywed smart loving graduates would be um, okay to sponsor an engaged couple after two years of marriage because they've already gone through the engaged course, um, which gives them a big leg up. And so if you were um, a smart loving graduate who'd been married just say two years, we would just make sure that maybe there was an older married couple that would support you in your first um, your first years of being a sponsor couple. So me and my husband, Joe, were a perfect example of this. We did the Smart Loving Engage course um, like nine years ago and we loved it so much and we loved having a sponsor couple and we knew that we wanted to get involved in that ministry and do what our sponsor couples did for us. So we begged um, <laughs> Fire and a Friend, can we please be a sponsor couple sooner than five, before five years? Um, and so we did that. So it's on a couple, you know, a couple to couple basis. We had a bit of um, leadership experience too within the church. So that really helped. So we recommend, as I said, they're general guidelines. Um, so we recommend that a sponsor couple would be regular church goers. So we want the sponsor couple to be connected to a worshipping community because this ministry is all about evangelization. We want to call that engaged couple into a deeper faith with Jesus. And we also recommend that the sponsor couple is validly married within the church because your sacramental witness is just vital to this ministry. And there are some matching guidelines for the engaged. We recommend that you're not a close relative or a close friend of the engaged couple. And why do we say this? Because one of the lessons, lesson three, is all about family of origin. So it can be quite hard to be honest about your family of origin if it's a family member who is your sponsor couple. Likewise, if you're a close friend or peer, um, it's hard to challenge your engaged couple if you're really a, a close friend to them. So a little bit of um, um, separ separation is, is good, not a, not a peer. And then a natural affinity. If there is a choice of sponsor couples at your parish, like a group of sponsor couples, you'd want to prioritise one that has, you know, some couples just get along better together. <laughs> so if there is a natural aff affinity and, and an organic relationship can develop, um, you might want to select a couple who matches with each other. 
Hope that makes sense. And sponsor engage meetings. So how does that all work? Well, in an ideal circumstance, a sponsor couple and an engaged couple would meet to go through the discussion questions after every lesson. But look, this is, can be flexible according to you and your engaged couple. So there are nine lessons within the engaged online course. And so after each lesson, your meeting would aim to go for one hour. Now, again, this is gold standard, but if you need to, you can meet less frequently. For example, you could meet after every two or three lessons. Uh, if you do this, you will need to allow more time um, because you'll have more discussion questions and more lessons to get through. But the main thing is um, that you're building a relationship with the engaged couple. So we would say there should be a minimum of three meetings um, plus your first contact. So where do the meetings usually take place? Well, we would say ideally in the sponsor couple's home, uh, which is like the domestic church. It's really beautiful to invite a couple into your home and to them to see the functioning of your own house and your your um, your sacrament in action where it where it is. Um, but if you, it can't be done in your parish home, it would be fine to do it in a parish office or you could even do a video call online. We've had some couples, um, the first lesson they come to our home and then maybe, you know, we're all travelling or something for work. So our second lesson will be online. It's very flexible. So we, we leave it to your discretion of how, how it happens and how you organise that. So meetings ideally, like how does it all happen? Meetings ideally would be couple to couple. However, if one of you is unwell for one of the lessons, don't let, especially we've got <laughs> just had a pandemic, you don't want to let um you don't want to let any of your illnesses or or disruptions stop the couple from progressing, um, especially if their wedding date is fast approaching. So leave it up to your discretion. Ideally, if you're both there, um, it's perfect. But if for one of one of the um, meetups, it can only be one of you just use your discretion. And this is a great quote, perfection is the enemy of the good. <laughs> so we've presented you to the ideal, <laughs> you know, it would be in your home with nine lessons, an hour each. Um, but we we know, just know that you can be flexible with that. So we leave it to your wisdom um, and, and you would discern understanding the unique circumstances of both yourselves and the engaged couple and when they're getting married and make decisions about how often you meet according to that. So the first contact, your first contact with the engaged couple, it could be over the phone or after mass. You could already know the couple or your local priest could, you know, pair you up together. Um, you just want to be enthusiastic in that first meeting and share in their joy, um, the joy of their engagement. So show your enthusiasm. So I often say, we are so excited to be a sponsor couple. The course is just going to give you such wonderful tools for your marriage. Um, you can emphasise how that you guys will grow in your relationship by journeying with them as their sponsor couple. And I think just doing this sets a good role model for them of how important continual relationship education is for a marriage. Um, and then you also want to just talk about practical administration queries. So make sure they've got an account on Smart Loving that they've enrolled in the Engage course. Make sure that they've either ordered the, a pair of the workbooks or that they've printed the PDF of the workbooks, which they need. Um, so, yeah, even though it's an online course, every couple does need a workbook, um, which they can purchase from us or print. So you want to swap details like their names, emails, phone numbers. Um, and if they're coming to your home for the meetings, share your address. Um, but if you're meeting in another location, for instance, the parish meeting room, explain exactly where they need to go and where they need to park. If it's an engaged couple who, you know, is not familiar with the church, um, they might not know all those logistical things. So communicating that to the couple uh, in an email or a text message too that, that so they can refer back to it can just be really helpful and um, less stressful for them. So just think about the time, figure out when their wedding date is and make sure you have enough time to work through the course before their wedding. So ideally they need at least nine weeks before their wedding. Um, but they most, most likely need longer than that because if they only have nine weeks to the wedding, they have to get through one lesson per week. Um, so just keep that in mind. So for lesson one, we know most engaged couples are internet savvy and, and have done an online course of some sort, but if they need help, you could leave them, lead them through lesson one if necessary. 
So your first few meetings with the engaged couple are really important. You want them to feel encouraged and supported. And as Fran was saying, some couples can be a bit nervous or reticent about having a sponsor couple. Maybe they're a bit fearful of what is expected of them. Or in some parishes and dioceses, they are paired with a sponsor couple and they don't have an option not to have one. So they might res resent the fact that, that they have to, they're obliged to have a sponsor couple. So our job is just to win them over with your own couple charism, your own style and hospitality. So you want to make your first contact a really pleasant experience and build up that trust with the couple. And as I said, make sure they understand that they're not being tested by you, like you're not going to pass or fail them and, and um, be the decider if they get are allowed to get married or not. Some engaged couples have a bit of a misunderstanding that the couples will pass or fail them, which is not true at all. So in the first meeting, um, I'd encourage you to explain your role, clarify that you're not counsellors, you're not there to fix them or pass or fail them in the course. Your role is to accompany them on their journey to matrimony. And then you want you just want to talk about confidentiality because um, inform the couple that everything that's said in that um, in that sponsor couple meeting and discussion, that it's by either you or them, that it's confidential, that you won't be repeating details of their conversation to others. And you'd also like them not to share details of your private relationship with others too. The only exception to that um, would be if something is disclosed of a criminal nature that did require mandatory reporting. So just make sure you're up to date with your diocese practices about mandatory reporting. And if you're ever unsure, pick up the phone to the parish or diocese um, or Smart Loving to ask for advice. So the meeting format, before the engaged couple arrives, we, my husband Joe and I, we like to make sure we've completed the lesson and the activities. And that just gives you fresh examples to share with the engaged couple about your own relationship. And then hospitality, so any practical things like tidying up the space, settling the kids, um, preparing a little bit of food, um, a snack, etc. And I'd really encourage you to spend a few minutes in prayer um, before the engaged couple comes, just to place yourself yourselves into the presence of God and invite God into your meeting. We find when we don't do that, we it, it's funny, we always have a bit of a disagreement before the engaged couple comes. And I don't know if it's because, you know, we're stressed because I'm I'm running around going, make sure the toilet's clean and things like that. Um, but when we've we've prayed beforehand and we've made that time, we always have a more successful meeting. So it's a hot tip. Um greeting the couple. So start with a bit of a social catch-up. Um, you might ask about their wedding plans, um, the work in their past week, offer them refreshments, cup of tea, coffee, glass of wine or a beer, depending on the vibe of the couple and your own, your own style of hospitality. And then you want to then transfer into the discussion. So a good way to transition into that deeper conversation is to start the lesson prayer, to, to pray the lesson prayer. And then you'd go into the discussion questions at the end of it, the lesson in the workbook to begin the conversation. You don't have to be limited by those discussion questions. Let the conversation develop naturally. And you don't need to answer all of the discussion questions if you're running out of time. But if you do find the conversations drifting off topic to superficial things, you can use the discussion guide to bring it back on focus. And equally, sometimes the couple has something that's just impacting their relationship and they want to discuss it with you. So don't be constrained by trying to complete the full list of questions. Um, you know, if they, if they want to get something off their chest, just let them do that. Now, if something comes up with which you don't know how to respond, just ask, say, look, we don't know how to respond to that at the moment. Can we get back to you with an answer? Or you can refer them to an appropriate person like a counsellor, your parish priest or a smart loving coordinator. So in each, um, we have a summary of the learning objectives from each lesson, which you can find in the sponsor notes online. So at the end of that meeting, we, Joe and I always like to plan your next meeting and we always allow sufficient time to complete the lesson activities. Um, so it's a good idea to get out your calendars all at the same time and um, book in the next session together. And then after that, you just want to say a closing prayer to wrap up. So that can be really simple, like an Our Father or a Hail Mary or a Glory Be. So I'll just show you now um, a screenshot of Lesson 1, and these are the discussion questions that are in the workbook. 
And so the questions can also be involved can be viewed in the sponsor course in the online learning platform. So after you've the last meeting, after you've completed all of the lessons, um, the couple will be asked to in the course um, complete the final assessment and they will be asked to include the celebrant or the supervisor's name and email address. And once they do this, it will automatically send a copy of the certificate and course report to the priest or deacon and a link um, to a celebrant's guide to the course report. So you won't get this as a sponsor couple, just to let you know what happens. Now, sometimes the priest or the celebrant may want to debrief with you about your experience as a sponsor couple. Um, just remember if this the priest reaches out to you, just respect the privacy of the engaged couple in any discussions that you have. Um, also, if you have any discussions with other sponsor couples, just keep in mind the confidentiality. So at the end of the last meeting, Formally, your responsibilities as a sponsor couple have come to an end. Um, however, we've stayed in contact with many of our engaged couples. We've often been invited to the baptism of their children many years later. Um, and you see them locally at the parish or you might, you know, stay in contact via social media. But let's just talk about what happens after the course. Oh, and our own sponsor couple. Um, have been so generous. I'm just about to give birth in about six weeks. I'm quite heavily pregnant. Our in response couple has like given us maternity clothes and just been a real support to us. Um, so even though, you know, as I said, you're formally finished as a response couple at the end, you can, you know, still stay in contact with, you, with your couple. But what happens next for the engaged couple after that final assessment in lesson nine? They will probably meet with the supervisor priest or the celebrant where they go through the course report and certificate that is sent by our system. They, they should also be doing a fertility, uh, natural a fertility awareness course. Now this is mandatory in some dioceses and the smart loving course that we provide also comes with a certificate of completion. There's a wedding, wedding liturgy planning guide um, that we give to assist the couple in choosing the readings and prayers. And they've got various options for the Bible readings. And they usually have a wedding rehearsal. That's going to be arranged by the celebrant and the wedding party in the days before the wedding. Then, of course, there's the big day, <laughs> the wedding. So sometimes as a sponsor couple, you will be invited to the wedding. And look, it's completely up to you whether you attend. Sometimes um, Joe and I have chosen to attend the ceremony, which I just think is lovely to represent the parish. Um, and sometimes we'd attend both the um, the wedding liturgy and the reception um, if we were invited, or you can choose to politely decline. So um, then there's the newlywed years and Smart Loving, we have a program called Smart Loving Newlywed, an email program that's sent to the engaged couple, the married couple uh, monthly. So that can be done by the individual couple. Uh, you could also share it as a small group and uh, with a group of sponsor couples. Um, so that's a, a resource that's available to to them as well. Laura, so the benefits. I'm, I'm just tracking yeah. the time a little bit. Um, yeah. I'm wondering, do we want to just take stock? How are people going? Do you have any questions? questions? Do you want us to? Yeah, I'm seeing heads nodding. You're okay. You want us to just keep going? It feels like we're projecting a lot of information, but I want to give you a chance to to ask a question if you had any. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, okay. We've got where we've only got five minutes left in the hour, Laura. So we'll just mm -hmm. um I'll be quick. Yeah. Okay. So um benefits of being a sponsor couple. Look, it's incredibly rewarding. Joe and I have been a sponsor couple for 10 years. It's really enriched our marriage. Um being exposed to the engaged course content multiple times reminds us of our um that marriage is our mission. It's really easy to forget that. Um and look, it's a beautiful way of building parish community. It's a time, marriage preparation is a time when many couples come back to the church after years of being away. And it's just so beautiful to be able to share our faith. Um, and the course just has really op like opportunities to invite the couple to um, participate in the Sacrament of Reconciliation um, and to pray together, to teach them how to pray if they've never prayed before. So those are just a few of the many benefits of becoming a sponsor couple. So I'd highly recommend this beautiful ministry. Um, so Fran, the roles that we talk about. Yeah, just a just a point of clarification. You've probably heard us talk about celebrant and supervisor. 
Um, so just some distinctions there. So the celebrant is the priest or the deacon who officiates the wedding. And then when we talk about the supervisor, we're talking about the priest or the deacon who is overseeing the formation of the engaged couple. Usually this should be their parish priest. And it might be, he might, the parish priest might also be the celebrant, but sometimes it can be different. So classic cases when they're getting married overseas, the celebrant will be at the overseas destination and he will usually say, you need to connect with your local parish or your local diocese to have your marriage preparation formally supervised and he will wait to receive the certificate of completion. So we just distinguish between those because the person we really want to interact with is actually the supervisor because they're going to have that ongoing and longer term contact with the couple. And so the report that the couple completes goes to the supervisor rather than the celebrant. Um, or they can go to both if they provide both emails. The couple's free to share it with whoever they want. But um, we prioritise the supervisor to make sure that he gets that so that he can review that with them. The sponsor couple, this is yourselves, the married couple. It's usually from the parish, but sometimes it might be somebody from the, the couple's network. So at the moment, as we're still establishing more sort of parish groups and a bigger pool of sponsor couples, Engaged couples are typically sourcing their own sponsor couples if they choose to go that path. And that might be, you know, somebody they know through their youth group or, um, you know, a, a, an auntie or someone like that that's, that's um, they've got an affinity with, but it meets the criteria. Mm -hmm. And finally, sometimes we have a coordinator. So these are, are local people responsible for administration and leadership in a region. So this could be an employee in a diocese. So, for example, in Parramatta Diocese, um, Karen Abrams is the Parramatta coordinator. Um, Canberra Goulburn for you, Charlotte and Patrick. Um, it's Lara Kirk. Um, I'm not sure you're um, Brisbane. We haven't set up a coordinator up there yet, so you know we'll we'll be looking to try to do that. And I'm not sure where the other couple is from. Broken but anyway, Bay, we, think, we'll. Sorry. I think Dal um, Dalila and Hugo, you guys are from Broken Bay, aren't you? Okay, great. Great. So we'll be able to initially just support you from here in Sydney. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of important just so that you feel uh, supported and, and networked and, and so on. So we're really trying to think about putting in place a formation team for the engaged couple. And when we send out the email notifications after each lesson to the engaged couple or the notification to the supervisor when they enrol, we get them to say, who's the priest supervising your preparation? What's his email address? We'll send him an automatic email notification that will say, here's the formation team for, you know, Joe and Mary Smith who are getting married in, you know, years time and would we'll list the different people. This is the celebrant they've provided. This is the, the supervisor. Here's their sponsor couple if they have them. Um, it's trying to, I guess, differentiate between, this is not just learning something, like we go to a course and we get a certificate from, you know, as an educational model. This is about a formation model. So we're thinking in terms of, of the whole person, particularly this, incorporating the spiritual development. And it's also trying to bring in this notion of it's, it's lifelong. So it's not just the engaged couple, but it's also the sponsor couple who's being renewed and continuously formed in it. It's the priest as well who's actually called to have, um, to be the bridegroom to these, his bride, to his parishioners. So it's also forming the priest. So in the longer term, our goal is to establish what we call the, the M team, which is like a parish a community of, of um, empowered couples who initiate and oversee and animate all the sort of different, a number of different marriage um, activities in the parish. So obviously the marriage catechumenate for those who are getting married, but also then newlywed, newly married, things for couples in crisis, general enrichment, celebrations of anniversaries. There's so many different things that we could be doing, parenting courses and so on. Mm -hmm. um, that would all become part of the mandate of a marriage team to try to, I guess, lift the lift the standard right across the church. Now, before, I mean, usually at this point, Laura would do a demo and just log into the platform. Has some of you have done the course, so you're familiar with what the platform looks like. Has Dahlia and have you managed to log in and to the sponsor course yet? No, I don't think um, Charlotte and Patrick or um, Dahlia and Hugo haven't yet. Um, why don't you, are you ready to take over the screen? I you am, can, yep. Okay, why don't you just do do this quickly? We maybe don't need to cover yeah, all sure. the details. You could just be a bit selective. Yeah, sure. 
Um, so look, I'll just show a demonstration of the sponsor course. As a sponsor couple, you can get free access to the course, but you first need to enroll in the sponsor course. So to do that, you just go to our homepage, which is smartloving.org, and then you'll see a give back um, menu item. Just scroll down and you can select become a sponsor couple. So that will open up this page here. And I just encourage you to read the information on that page. And you can scroll down where it says ready to start, become a sponsor couple, enroll now. And you can click the enroll now button. That will add the sponsor course to your cart for free. And you can follow the prompts on that page to create a smart loving account. Just to save time, I'll, I'll let you do that after the webinar. Um, and I'll just show you, I've already logged in with the, my demo account to show you the back end of once you're logged in. This is what you'll see. Um, you know that you're logged into the course because it will say your name and your spouse's name at the top right hand corner of the screen and you'll see the sponsor course and the fertility course in your dashboard. So I just wanted to let you know the Smart Living Fertility is a course teaching couples about fertility awareness methods and every engaged couple gets free access to the fertility course with the purchase of the engaged course. So we give it to you for free as a sponsor couple too. Within the sponsor course and the engaged course, we, we do have an overview of fertility awareness methods, and that's in lesson seven. However, the fertility course just gives much more detailed instructions for an engaged couple, and it actually instructs them of how to use um, a fertility awareness method. That's the symptothermal method. So some dioceses or parishes require the engaged couple to complete both the engaged course and the fertility course, but many only require the engaged course. So to familiarise yourself within the sponsor course, you just want to click on the yellow go button and this will open up the course. Now remember the sponsor course, it's exactly the same content as the engaged course, except for the fact it doesn't have any time progression locks. Uh, and, and as a sponsor couple, you don't need to complete the quizzes and with an 80% pass rate to open up the next lesson. So this means that you can review the content quickly and jump around lessons if you need to. So lesson zero has some important admin administration tasks. So I'll just click on that now. And you can watch the introduction video, which explains what the engaged couple needs to do. And you can read the information on that page. And when you do have an engaged couple, you can click on registration for new couples and fill this form out because it's helpful for our records. Um, at the moment, many of you don't have an engaged couple yet. So you can skip this section and come back to it when you do. So just say, pretend I do have an engaged couple. I'd click reason for doing the course. I'm a married sponsor couple, a company engaged couple. And my track is as a sponsor with an engaged couple. And I'd enter my engaged couples um, names there, completing all the rest of the details and then clicking the button, um, register us and let's get started. Now doing that is actually gonna trigger an email that will be sent to you with helpful links and tips of everything that we're showing you in this information session. So I'm just gonna click next topic button at the end of the page. And doing that will go to the next topic of lesson of the lesson, which gives you important information about the workbooks. So as I said, even though it's an online course, there is a workbook that both you as the sponsor couple and the engaged couple need. And you can either purchase a pair of workbooks uh, from Smart Loving, or you can download a PDF copy of the workbooks and print two copies, one for you and one for your spouse. Now, sometimes the engaged couple will gift you with a pair of workbooks, but sometimes they choose to print their own workbooks to save the cost. We give them different options. So please note that um, we do give the engaged couple both options. So sometimes you'll get a workbook from them, sometimes you won't. So the next topic of lesson zero is titled what's involved. And this just explains the course content, um, activities, the power of prayer, and it provides additional resources and services for you as a sponsor couple. It also talks about various language options within the course and gives an instruction video if you would like to use Google Translate on the website. So I'll click on next topic. The next section is called sponsor resources. And this gives you a step-by-step -step guide to get you started as a sponsor couple. So under the step-by-step -step guide, there's also um, some FAQs. And so you can um, select the accordion to drop down to see the answers. The next topic, um, 
This gives some more information about safeguarding and pastoral care. So we provide you with some smart loving guidelines, as well as a reminder about confidentiality and pastoral care of the engaged couple. There is also a sponsor help centre. So if you have any concerns, contact us through our help centre. And you can also see this at the top right hand corner of the menu. So I'll just click next topic now. We also include an optional relationship impact quiz. Now, this helps us to evaluate the impact of the sponsor course, and you have the opportunity to complete it at the beginning of the course, the end of the course, and six months after the course. It takes about three minutes, completely optional um, for you to discern. So for the engaged couple, this same, you'll see on the course navigation here on the right, for the engaged couple, this admin lesson explains to them how they get their course completion certificate. It explains the time progression locks in each lesson and that they need to answer each quiz with an 80% pass mark. Now, even though you as the sponsor couple don't need to do the quizzes, it would be good for you to attempt them. So I'm just going to click on lesson one now, just via the right hand side, lesson one, mission to love. Each lesson has uh, contains a summary of the key concept of the lesson. So this key concept is to love the other in the way that he or she most likes and needs to be loved. It also has a prayer for your engaged couple. And this is the same prayer in each lesson, just to know that. And each lesson reminds you of those workbook links to the PDF of the workbook. Um, you can see on the right hand side, the course navigation and all the topics within lesson one, you can see them there. Um, you can also nav navigate to the lesson topics, as I showed you, at the bottom of the page here. So I might just skip ahead to lesson, to topic 1.3, which is called Love, a Gift of Self. And you can see your progress through the course via the ticks. See how some of those are ticked? Um, any ones that don't have a tick means you haven't done them yet. Um, so the engaged couple and you as the sponsor couple will read all the content in your own time and space and watch the videos. So I'm just going to show you um, the video in this topic and I'll play you a little bit of the video. Um, okay, sharing the screen. It's a bit like air and water. We need both to exist. Saint John Paul II described marital love as a total gift of self. This gift of self may be expressed in acts of service towards each other, or it may involve being emotionally open and vulnerable. At times it may require us to be more supportive or nurturing than we feel. Relying on just our emotions to make our marriage a success is a sure path to disappointment and disconnection. But if we approach our marriage with a mindset of being self-giving, then not only are we more likely to feel in love, it becomes easier to be self-giving. We set up a virtuous circle. So it's important to approach our marriage with the mindset of being a gift to our spouse. Now, if you're going to give someone a gift, it makes sense to find out what they like. Every person experiences love in a unique way. What speaks powerfully of love to one person may not make the merest impact on another. Your task as a husband and a wife is to discover the ways this unique woman and man feels most loved. This is their unique love profile, and the sooner you work it out, the more successful you will be in loving each other. Byron's unique love profile is the specific gestures through which he most powerfully experiences love. And when I know these, I can consciously and willfully choose to love him that way. All right, I might just stop you there, Fran, sorry. <laughs> um, as you can see, the videos are engaging with high production video and animations. There's also a video transcript for uh, anyone who's hard of hearing like me <laughs> and closed captions um, of the course in a variety of languages, English, Polish, Mandarin and Spanish. So there is a reminder also of the concept of the lesson. And there's also a reflection activity for you before you move on to the next topic. These reflections are also printed in the workbook. So the course also has a take notes feature. 
um, at the bottom right hand side of the website where you can take notes on the lesson topic and you can see all your notes by clicking on your dashboard um, or the view all notes hyperlink here. Um, just remember the notes are private and they can only be seen by you. But there is also, just get out of the notes section, there's also a comment section. Um, and you can leave a comment about a topic, a lesson topic. But please remember that the other sponsor couple will be able to see your com comments. But it's a great place to type out your insights or what you've learned in the topic. You can get to the next topic um, by the button at the bottom of the page. So I'll just click that or by the course navigation on the right hand side that I showed you before. You can also see what topic you are in because it's bolded on the right hand side you see here. So I'm, I know that I'm in topic 1.4. Um, and I just want to show you each lesson has a wrap up section. So I'm just going to lesson one, topic six now, the wrap up. Um, and the wrap up just reminds you of the key concepts and it gives you something to practice for the week uh, and some extension activities. There is also in the sponsor course, sponsor content. So that gives you a list of discussion questions for you and your engaged couple. And these are the same questions that you'll find in your workbook. There's also the lesson summary, a message from Byron and Francine, and advice about your first meeting. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page, there's a button that says, send me this lesson's email. Now, by clicking this button, an automatic email will be sent to you with all the information above that's in here um, in an email. Now, this is really helpful if you want to forward it to your spouse, <laughs> like if they're on the way home from work or whatever, that you can email it to them. Um, or if you want to print it before your first, your engaged couple comes. And you'll also see a button that says, um, take the quiz. Now, as I said, the engaged couple, when they take this quiz, they've got to get 80% correct to progress to the next lesson. But you as a sponsor couple, you can go to the next lesson. You're free to move around the course um, in any order you want. Now, we have this high pass rate of 80% just to make sure that the engaged couple is being adequately prepared for the sacrament and that they're comprehending the content. We don't want them to just rush through. So the quizzes have multiple choice questions. They can get hints if they're stuck. And if they get the answers wrong, they can retake the quiz. All the quiz questions are also printed in the workbook. So I'll just go to lesson two now, um, which is about communication and dialogue. And when um, you'll see at the top right hand side, there's a timer and tells you, that's, this tells you how much time you spent in the course. So the engaged couple must spend an hour in each lesson before the quiz will activate. So this is to ensure we don't have couples just rushing through the course really quickly. Um, and as you can see, there's several topics in each of the lessons. Um, if I click on lesson three, you can see that lesson two's topics collapse and you can see all the, just wait for the website to load, you can see that all of lesson three topics have loaded in the right hand side. Um, I mentioned previously the help centre from the menu item. So I'll just cl cl click on that now to show you. Once you've clicked on that, you can see all the common FAQs for each of the Smart Loving courses that you are enrolled in. So because I've got the fertility course, I'm seeing the fertility FAQs and the sponsor FAQs. Um, most of your questions and answers can be found here, but if there's anything that you still you haven't found the answer, you can fill out the contact us form. So that's the end of the online demonstration, but you can work your way through the sponsor course yourself by um, logging into your Smart Loving account, enrolling in Smart Loving Sponsor Course first, and then logging back into your account once you've created it to go through the content. So I'll stop sharing now, and I'll allow Fran to go back to the PowerPoint. I'll just jump ahead. There's only two slides left, people, so, and 10, I'll get those up. Scroll, scroll, scroll. So your next steps. Um, firstly, I guess we just ask you to take some time to discern whether this is something that um, that's right for you, right for you and your spouse. Uh, sample the sponsor course, review the resources that are there, talk with the spiritual directory, parish priest, pray about it, obviously. And when you're ready, let us know. 
we'll reach out to you in a couple of weeks um, and just touch base, probably by email initially, but we might also pick up the phone or whatever. Uh, if you're happy to go ahead, um, and we really do, you want you to feel free to decline to become a sponsor couple if you discern it's not right for you. But if you want to go ahead, we'll send you a set of workbooks as our gift. Sometimes the engaged couple, if they book into the sponsor track, they'll get two sets of workbooks. So you might end up with a second copy down the track. Hang on to those and maybe try and recruit another sponsor couple from your parish. You can hand the gifts, the, the workbooks that, onto them. Um, we'll also connect you with your local coordinator and get you up and running as soon as possible because there's nothing quite like actually tasting it and experiencing it to really uh, experience those positive benefits and be you know, reaffirmed um, in the importance of your ministry and your gift to these couples. So that's pretty much it from us. Um, if you've got reactions, questions, we're very happy to just open the discussion now. Just take your um, mic off mute and. Um, Fire away. Yeah, go ahead. No need to put your hand up. <laughs> Just go ahead. So you might need Bye. to. Yeah. Okay. Um, just a question. Um, is any cost involved in this course? No, it's free for sponsor couples. So there's no cost to you. The engaged couple obviously does um, have some cost to pay. They, their course is it's presently in Australia, it's $129 for the basic course. And if they want to add the workbooks, actually, I do prep a slide in case that came up. Um, so if they do the self-paced course without a sponsor couple or anybody else, it's $129. They can print their workbooks or they can order them for $65. And if they select the parish sponsor track, it's $200, but they get two pairs of workbooks. So it's only an extra six dollars to get the second pair of workbooks, um, and that way we're basically trying to we're cross subsidising your costs. So we don't want you to be out of pocket, but we do charge the engaged couple. That helps covers our expenses and fees and the cost of maintaining the course. Yeah. Okay. So okay, just to uh, make it clear, right? For the um, engaged couple. Because usually they they will ask how much is the is is the the cost. Yes. Okay. okay so will be. Um, well, it would be. We we would say if they ask you, I would say two hundred dollars, and that includes your workbooks, yep. and a second set. And if you've already got a set of workbooks, as I said, hang on to them, and ha pass them on to a new sponsor couple. Okay. Because you know. Uh, we know that anything is for free, okay? And it's cost involved in everything, right? Mm -hmm. And it, this is a, a fantastic. It's, it's really, really fantastic. Um, we uh, provide, we are being given uh, the primary courses to the Spanish community here in Melbourne. Okay. Oh. So wow. when... Yes, but it, it is fantastic and uh, for many, many, many years, but we have moved to this parish right uh, uh, six years ago. Uh, so now, for some reason, God <laughs> God sent this, this uh, uh, wow. invitation to us and we are just uh, engaging in the parish. No, we are, we are being engaged in the parish and Right now, I'm doing a, 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 some a, a few works there. Okay, so this is just because we are been uh, providing to the Spanish uh, community in Melbourne. Okay, yeah. but now we would like to do it here in in mm. Sale, in Sale, or in Warrigal. So ah, oh, right. I was wondering where. So you're in Sale. Okay, lovely. We are in Sale. So. That is that is why. Diocese. So that will be two two dioceses. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So I don't know how it will work, but uh, this is a question that we we wanted to know. Right. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Great question. And you will have noticed that the videos have closed captions in Spanish. Yes, I had read that that one. 
The yeah. workbooks, though, are in English. So it works well for couples where English is their second language and they maybe yes. can read better than they can hear it. So they can at least, so they can help their comprehension, but it's not really fully available in Spanish. It's kind oh, of no, just no. A, We a understand, but most of the couples, they, 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 they uh, speak both languages. Yes. Right. Great. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Thank Love you it. so much. Thank no you. problem. That's excellent. And, and just to um, reiterate as well, some couples that we've had, they've um, they've gotten the cheaper options so that they didn't, they just came with printed workbooks, not the professional ones, and they didn't give us any workbooks. So in that situation, we just had to print the workbooks ourselves. So if you've got, if you've got your own copy, it's great because you can just re always rely on yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions? Yeah, thanks. That was um really helpful. Um, we we probably we can sit within a parish context in in some in some sense, but there's also a sense from uh, we're in Brisbane that there could be like how couples referred to you as a just oh we're mental couples for a particular community or parish, and so they're you know linear. Or how does that work? Yeah, can I speak to this one, Fran? Yeah. Um, yeah. We so I'm in, I'm part of like a basketball community, but basketball it's a Catholic community, basketball, basketball community. community. Oh, I'll just I'll meet guys. Oh, I'll just I'll meet guys. Myself. Sorry, I just muted you, um, uh, Nick and Sarah. Um, so often some the in the basketball community, couples would get engaged, and then they would know that Joe and I are a sponsor couple and ask us to be their sponsor couple. So what you'll find if you're involved in a community, <laughs> um, that you will um, get a, a bit of a reputation for being a sponsor couple. So that you might get tapped on the shoulder by engaged couples that way. Um, if you're not part of like you know couples for Christ or the Emmanuel community, or you you're just a regular um, parishioner, you might want to tap your priest on the shoulder and have a conversation with him hey i'm interested in being a sponsor couple through the smart loving course um you know if any of your engaged couples are going through the smart loving course let them know that i'm parish sponsor couple and then the priest can be the one that connects you and so that would be a case if you didn't know the engaged couple so we've had um a few of those in my nine years of ministry with being a sponsor couple a few of both but often the engaged couple knows you some, for us, the engaged couple has figured out somehow that we're a sponsor couple, then they've got engaged and asked us to to journey with them. So, Fran, did you want, did I forget anything no, there? Did you want to? Yeah, no, that's good. What we will do, though, is, um, if, do you work in, did I notice, do you work in the, do you work um, in the, the diocese? Um, the I do, yeah. I am. Um, I was saying we're I'm we're part of a manual, and so yeah, that's how we okay. do it. But I'm I'm working at vocation office for the okay. archdiocese. So I was just saying to Sarah, I have a meeting with you guys next Thursday, which is funny, yeah. but um, yeah. it's a uh, for the normal LMF deal. But yeah, yes, um, oh, yeah. good. <laughs> okay, so we could we can talk to you about um how we coordinate and match couples and that sort of thing. And that sort of thing. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, I've got a bunch of questions on a higher level, but very, uh, very keen for, for it all at the moment. So, they know. Thanks for the presentation. And I think there's um there's great opportunities. I think for smart loving as well to you know speak to community uh, to communities like the Emmanuel community or couples for Christ and see how we can work with them because they've obviously got those you know really on fire um, couples for the faith. So um, we'll, we'll, that will be part of our mission and our vision too. Yes, fantastic presentation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, we've run over time. I'm sorry about that. If there's anybody, if you've got any other questions, we're happy to stay on as long as necessary, but I also do want to let people go if they need to. Um, thank you very much for your time and for your willingness to consider this um, little mission a ministry. And uh, as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up with you in the coming weeks and, and check in with you. But feel free to reach out to us at any time. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Bye. Thank you, Fran. Thank you, Laura. God bless everyone. Bye-bye.